Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on boot options. This is from our CompTIA requirements from test 701, section 3.4. And we're going to look at all kinds of boot options here. We're going to look at the way that your system boots, the number of disks that are used in which order, and look at the priority of those. So we're going to go through what all of those might be and where you would configure them. And then we'll also look at Windows boot options. Once your operating system is now started up from one of those devices, there's a number of modes, safe mode, booting to a restore point, recovery options. All of these things are going to be pretty important to look at when we start trying to figure out how to troubleshoot what's going on in the Windows operating system. When you're starting up your computer, your computer steps through a certain order of devices to determine where it should begin the boot process. And as soon as it gets to a device that's available that has a boot partition on it, it begins to boot from that device. So the question is, if you put in a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM that's bootable, like your Windows install media, you put that in and it boots from your hard drive, then obviously your boot order is not quite correct. This is configured always in the BIOS of your system. So you will be able to decide which one of these devices should I boot from. You'll notice that some of these are things you would recognize. Your floppy disk, your hard disk, your USB disks. Yes, you can boot from a USB disk, a CD DVD. And the last one here is an interesting one, a network adapter. You can configure a workstation on your, on your network that has no floppy drive, no hard drive. The USB ports are disabled, and it has no DVD or CD-ROM drive in it. You can configure your system to do something called a PIXI, a pre-boot execution environment that goes out to a server that's on your network, automatically finds it, pulls down the information it needs to boot from, and it boots from a boot image that's out there on that server. You don't need any type of disk drive whatsoever to start your computer up in that mode. This is usually done in very large environments where people don't want to have to manage individual workstations. They don't have to want to have to manage the media that's in those workstations. They can just put very, well, simple machines out there, no hard drives, no floppy drives, no drive of any kind. And that system just becomes a remote device that uses all remote access to disks to be able to use and operate. It's very, very simple. If you ever need to replace it, you simply take a machine out, you put a new one in, it boots from wherever it booted to begin with. So it certainly certainly simplifies some of the administration to be able to do that. Let's look at how you would configure these things in your BIOS. If you've been following along with our virtual system so far in our course, you know we use Sun VirtualBox a lot. It's now owned by Oracle. That VirtualBox software is free, but it doesn't have that front end BIOS setting that you're accustomed to seeing as if you were on a real computer. So that becomes difficult to see a BIOS configuration. So I've switched over here to Windows Virtual PC, which is yet another virtualization piece of software. It's from Microsoft. You can download it. It's also free. But this also has that normal startup process. And if you hit Shift Escape when this virtual PC is starting up an operating system, then you'll see the normal screens. And you can hit the Delete key to start the BIOS. If you'd like more information on how to get in and use some of these BIOS settings, we've got a video that's in one of our other chapters that talks about configuring the BIOS. So now that we're at this BIOS setup screen, you can see a number of options across the top. There's a main, advanced, power, boot, security, and exit. Well, boot sounds like what we would like to look at. So I'm going to use my arrow key and arrow over to the boot section. I've got four options here. I have boot settings for my boot device priority, hard disk drives, floppy drives, and CD-ROM drives. Well, I would like to change the boot device priority. So I'm going to hit Enter. Now, in your system, if you're not looking at a Windows Virtual PC desktop, there are other BIOS settings in other versions of BIOS that may look very different than this, but very similar in the way that it operates. And if you start going through a different BIOS, you'll start to see there are other screens. And maybe those screens will tell you to use the plus sign or the minus sign to move devices up and down. On this particular BIOS, you select what you'd like to change. Let's say I would like my first boot device to be the floppy drive. Then I select my first boot device. I hit Enter, and I choose the floppy drive. And then it changes to the floppy drive. And it simply moves and replaces what was there previously with where the floppy drive was to begin with. So I just moved position between my floppy drive and the hard drive, which is the third boot device. So this is the way this would operate. On our system, it would look at the floppy drive. If there was a bootable floppy, it would boot from that. It would then move to the CD-ROM drive. If there was a bootable CD-ROM, it would boot from that. 
Then it goes to the hard drive. If it's bootable there, it boots from that. And lastly, it finally does a Pixie type boot where it will boot based on an image it gets from across the network. Just that simple to set up. So if one of your systems is not booting in the order that you would expect, now you know exactly where to go to configure that. Normally, when you're working with Windows, it starts up, it boots up properly, you get your Windows splash screen, and then your desktop, and everything works normally. It's when there's a problem that you're going to need to interrupt that process before it ever gets going so that you can make some changes to the operating system or run some diagnostics to see what's happening with Windows. We want to know more about what's going on. To do that, we're going to use some boot options that occur when you start up your computer. When Windows begins, this is after your BIOS has already gone through its process and it's decided, yes, I'm going to boot from a hard drive, and it chooses that hard drive and Windows begins to start, the operating system can be interrupted by pressing the F8 key. That's that key in your function key list on your keyboard. This brings up something called the Windows Advanced Options menu. Now you have to be really fast when Windows is starting up. And very often, I'll just sit there and hold down the F8 key or keep hitting the F8 key just to make sure I can catch it when Windows starts up. If you're not fast enough, it will try to boot the operating system. And then you're going to need to let the OS load or let it go as far as it can go and then restart what's happening with your computer. Now, if you can catch it at the right time and get into that Windows Advanced Options menu, then you've got a number of recovery options. If your Windows system is already having a problem, you may not even need to press the F8 key. It may automatically come up with these Windows Advanced Options because inside of there, you have an option to start Windows in safe mode. You can launch the Windows Recovery Console, or you can choose to have Windows go to its last known good configuration. Let's step through each one of these and learn more about the way that they work.